Hello everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to Laura's Dose of Stamping Therapy. Today I have some fabulous projects to share with you. I'm actually gonna take them out of their plastic, um, their little plastic sleeves because there's already plenty of bling and shine on these cards um, that I don't need the plastic to um, add any extra glare. I actually don't have the camera on my face because I felt like it was super blinky and glitching out um, whenever I um, was testing it to get on. So like I felt like it was super annoying for me. So I feel like it'd probably be annoying for you guys. Um, I need to get a separate uh, webcam for that second one. So um, so bear with me. Uh, you might not see my face uh, until I get that kind of fixed um, or figure out what's going on with that. So that's why you're not seeing my pretty face, but I'm doing cupcake face right now. So it's super cute and I love you guys. Hi, Susan. Welcome. I'm so glad to see you on. It has been a while. Thank you for sharing this with your friends. I appreciate that. Um, also, don't forget, I have put up the voting for... Uh, what you think the gender is going to be. So right now, uh, Team Blue is winning. Um, so yeah, cast your votes. You can either go to the post that I did on Facebook um, saying Team Blue or Team Pink, or you can always comment uh, on this live video and, um, and cast your vote for Team Blue or Team Pink. And I will write your name on one of the hearts. So I actually flipped over all the names just so it wasn't so distracting in there. Um, but yeah, I'll write your name on the pink or the blue heart and then that will be your vote. So whenever I say um, like I've created your heart or something like that, that's what I mean is that I have put your name on, um, on one of the hearts. We find out um, literally a week from today. So our appointment is at... Let's see. I think our appointment is at 1030 um, for the ultrasound and 1130 for um, the appointment with the doctor. So uh, at this time next Friday, uh, we will know the gender, but we probably won't reveal it until I think I'll reveal it on November 2nd, which is that following Monday, whenever I do um, Laura's dose of stamping therapy. So November 2nd is when you guys We'll probably find out unless for some reason I post something sooner. But we're telling grandparents and family on that Sunday. So um, so you really won't find out any sooner than that. Uh, which I might not be having a picture of my face on that Friday's dose of stamping therapy because I don't know, like I'm horrible at keeping secrets. So I don't want to read a comment and then like have a facial reaction um, because I'm horrible about that. So um, yeah, having my, uh, my camera not working well might be a good thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, one more week until we find out. So cast your vote for Team Pink or Team Blue and we will get started. So one of the things uh, that I wanted to show you guys is bling, bling and shine. So you all know that Stampin' Up's designer series paper is gorgeous with the foil paper and, um, you know, just looking so, so fancy, so elegant, adding that perfect shine. But we also have solid foil paper that coordinates so well with it. And then you can also step it up and heat emboss which is what I did with these two ornaments. I stamped them from the Christmas Gleaming stamp set and heat embossed those two ornaments. So I'm actually going to do that today with you guys. Um, heat embossing can be fun. Uh, it can be intimidating. Um, it is also one of those like stepped up ways to do a card. So if you're like a beginner, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, I could never do that. Trust me, you can do it, it's okay. But I understand you might not want to be making 500 Christmas cards heat embossed. I know I do not. Um, I would rather do a card like this if I was making multiples for my Christmas cards. So you might see more of these in my Christmas card stash 
than you will these. So this is the Christmas Gleaming. And uh, the designer paper used for this one is also the same on this one. But then this is heat embossed. I also wish you guys could feel it. It's textured. Like, let me see. I don't know if you guys can hear the, like, bumping as I'm, like, going over it with my finger. Um, but, like, it also has that fun texture to it with the heat embossing, whereas this is kind of more flat uh, with the designer series paper. You love this set and paper? I know. It's so gorgeous. And I really love all of the foiled papers. I just, I don't know. They're just so absolutely stunning. And they add so much to a project. Also, I'll show you the insides. So that was just like a leftover strip. That coordinates with the front. That also is on the inside. So super fun. And then this one... I have that little leftover strip on the side. And all of the images are from the Christmas Gleaming stamp set. So like with this one, since I did the, um, the Deck the Halls with Boughs of Holly, then I went ahead and did some holly on the inside. But you could also do like a greeting or I'm sorry, like an image like this on the top and the bottom to give like an elegant, um, you know, two-piece sort of thing uh, with that to give like a nice top and bottom. And then of course, these are the two ornaments that I used. And then I used that one. So the only items that I didn't use out of this stamp set for these two cards is this ornament, the little sprinkle, sparkle, whatever background flare, and then that top image, which I will try to get rid of some of the glare for that. But you could always swap out these two ornaments, whichever one you want. This is also the stamp set that I, are you ready for it? Gasp! Um, I actually cut. So I don't know, but I felt like the and didn't really fit for that greeting. Like it says, deck the halls with boughs of holly and be jolly this season. I just felt like it was really weird to open a card and say, and be jolly this season. I would rather just say be jolly, not and be jolly. Or Merry Christmas and be jolly this season. Like, I just didn't feel like it went very well together. So I cut it off. So there it is. You can always mask it. You can always cut it. You can do whatever you want with it. But I went ahead and cut it off. So I was just um, feeling brave that day. Because <laughs> I've only done that to very few stamp sets in my life. Um, because it does kind of scare me a little bit. So... Here I have with this card, um, the piece of designer series paper, we have a pretty peacock card base. And the piece of designer series paper is four inches by five and a quarter. And then I went with this label, which is from the Tasteful, Taste, Tasteful something. Um, I wish I knew the name of it, I'm sorry. The labels in the Tasty set. <laughs> Yeah, it's just totally not necessary. I don't really know why they have that in there. So um, so yeah, I use that label. It pretty much fits the greeting very well. So that's kind of why I went with that size. And then I just um, went a smidge bigger to get that foil piece. So we're going to go ahead and stamp our deck the halls. And that is stamped in Pretty Peacock. So the one card is all Pretty Peacock. The other card is all Knight of Navy. So now this just needs to be added to our card front with regular adhesive because I actually popped the foil up on dimensionals. But that's okay. You could always reverse that. You could put the foil on flat and then pop up the greeting over the foil. And then this is some copper ribbon. It's actually um, in the dual pack with uh, some mint macaron um quilted ribbon which is in the gilded autumn suite and then like I said that's a leftover piece of designer series paper let me get that dimension for you it is three quarters of an inch by five and a quarter because it's on a piece of very vanilla that measures um four inches by five and a quarter and then again I just used that pretty peacock for the inside Super, super cute. 
So there's that card, and now I have two of the other card to make. So for the other card, I have Knight of Navy as my card base. And then on the inside, I have a piece of very vanilla measuring four inches by five and a quarter. And then that leftover piece down there, I think it's one inch by five and a quarter. That is correct. One inch by five and a quarter along the bottom. Like I said, that's just like a leftover piece that I had that I just trimmed to either be like if I wanted, I could have done four inches or I could do the five and a quarter, whichever I have more of that uh, leftover piece left. So that's the inside. And then we're going to go ahead and stamp that Be Jolly in Knight of Navy on the inside. And yes, I did already uh, adhere it down. So I really need to behave and be good with stamping this greeting. So I wanna make sure I have a nice flat surface or otherwise I'm really pushing it. So there we have that card insert. Fabulous. And again, this card uses all um, Knight of Navy ink. Oop, I'm going to leave that open. So now for the front of the card, I have another piece of very vanilla measuring four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm going to stamp that Merry Christmas greeting. This one right here. And I have a couple tips for this. This is one of those solid images. Let me ink it up. And I'm inking it up really good. And it looks really good. But sometimes when you ink it up, there'll be like a, a spot that doesn't look as thick and solid. And then you end up with sort of like a white out image on some of it. So you definitely want to make sure it's inked up really well. And let me grab a piece of scrap paper just to stamp it a few times to make sure we're good. And then maybe one of the times it'll show that white. Of course it looks good. So now I just seem crazy. But I think you guys probably all know what I mean whenever it doesn't come out nice and solid and it kind of has that white around it. So it better do it. Now that I've done it two practice times, it better do it right on my cardstock. But I haven't adhered my cardstock down, so I can always flip it over and hide it underneath this spot right here. Or if I really mess up, I can flip it over um, and I can also get a new piece. So here we go. Perfect. It's a little crooked. Like when I say perfect, I mean like good enough. <laughs> Everything's not going to be perfect, perfect. So it's just... Um, Made with love, not perfection. Let's see. We're done with the navy blue ink now. Knight of navy. So now we have these two pieces and we need to add that piece of designer series paper. So I have the designer series paper. It is two inches by four inches. And then there's just a little strip of the pretty peacock. So what I'm actually going to do is add a little strip of adhesive along the edge of that designer series paper. And then I'm going to take my piece of Pretty Peacock cardstock. This can be as wide or as skinny as you want because you can use as much or as little showing as you want. So like I just had some scrap pieces and so I went ahead and left it with that length and stick it down. So again, you can have it like, you know, wider or skinnier. That's all personal preference. And then now I'm just adding more adhesive to the back. And I will add this to my card front. And this goes all the way to the edge. So there might be a little extra hanging off and that's perfectly fine. We'll just trim it off. So you can see there's a little bit hanging off there. So I'm just gonna trim that with some scissors. One of the other things that um, I can go ahead and just um, tell on myself about, since you guys can't actually see me, 
is I'm actually wearing a tank top because yesterday it was like 80 some degrees, like some ridiculous hot amount um, that totally felt weird because like I've been seeing pictures of people showing snow and their Halloween decorations in the snow and going, this doesn't feel right. Well, yesterday I was looking at my Halloween decorations and thinking this doesn't feel right because it was so stinking hot that it felt like the middle of summer. Um, and so today I have long pants on, but I put on a tank top and I thought, oh, I'll put on like a little like sweater or cardigan um, if I get chilly because I want to embrace summer just a little bit longer. <laughs> Although, of course, these swings of weather going up and down are so not playing nice with my head and my sinuses. So I'm ready for it to pick one and stay there. And unfortunately, I'm pretty sure winter is coming, so it needs to stay in the lower temps and not be fluctuating up and down. Okay. So now we have those two card front pieces. I'm not actually going to adhere those down just yet because we're actually going to take that copper trim and go up and around and tuck it behind. So these aren't ready to go on our card fronts just yet. So these are all extras and leftovers and who's a what's it. So let's toss those aside. And now we need four ornaments. So two for the one and two for the other. I feel like there's um, heat embossing powder all over the table. So I'm going to get out my ornaments from the set. And my Versamark. And my copper embossing powder. So if you've never heat embossed before, then take notes, tag this as a favorite, rewatch it as many times as you need, because here we go. So first we have Versamark. This is what a very loved Versamark ink pad looks like. Um, it's very dirty and it's very not white, uh, but that's okay, it still works. Let me show you what a new one looks like. Look how, even the lid. Look how nice and pretty it is. And voila! Well loved, new. <laughs> but my old one still works, so I'm still using it. I have a really hard time with that. I don't like to get rid of things that unless they're like broke or like wrong. Like sometimes, you know, like I might have like a tank top or like an undershirt or something that's like, too far gone and stretched out, but I'm like, but technically it still works. So I'm like, I need to like clip the, the like straps off or something in order to like break it so that I can officially let myself let it go. Okay, so this is actually just a clear sticky ink. So I'm just inking it up and you're really not gonna be able to see it. You might be able to see like a little bit of like a shine to it. and stamp it down. And so I need two little ones and two big ones. And I'll show you what it looks like on the paper once I get all of them stamped. That way hopefully at least one of them you guys can see. Okay, can you guys see those? So they're stamped in Versamark. So they're really just like a watermark look. It almost looks like I just did Knight of Navy on Knight of Navy ink, or a Knight of Navy cardstock. So now I'm gonna bring in my copper embossing powder and scoop it up and make sure every bit of those images gets covered so that that sticky ink can hold on to the embossing powder and tap off the extra. Let's go over it one more time just to be sure. I've been known to pour out the entire thing just because why not? Okay. 
it's better to like tap off the excess than it is to rub it off because you can actually rub it off of that spot that's supposed to hold the um the powder so like i don't want to touch the image and end up bothering the image So now we are ready to go to heat emboss. So this is going to be kind of loud. Um, I'm going to try my best not to really talk during it because you might not be able to hear me very well. So this is kind of like a very hot hair dryer is what I would kind of call this. There's setting one and setting two. Setting one I use for like drying things that have been watercolored. Setting two is what you want to use for, um, for actual heat embossing. It does take a while uh, to get started because it kind of has to heat up. But once it heats up, it does go really, really fast. So like if you ever do bulk heat embossing, I would almost recommend getting to this stage with a whole bunch and then heat embossing a whole bunch rather than turning it on, turning it off, turning it on, turning it off. So once it heats up, you'll notice that I will try to, my best to like hold this at the best angle so that you guys can see it. But you'll notice that it'll start to melt and go from like, like can you guys see how it looks like grainy little sand? Well, it will go from that to like a smooth, glossy, shiny solid. So I hope, I hope that kind of shows. And then it'll literally just crawl across the paper as it melts and it's the coolest thing ever. I really love watching heat embossing. One of the other things is, is I see a lot of people shake this around and that's actually just dispersing the heat more. You really wanna just stay in one spot until it melts and then just slowly creep around to the rest of it. So here we go. There it goes. So see how it's like super shiny up top but not on the bottom? And then it's starting to creep over to the big ones. It's also starting to burn my fingers. A lot of times I leave it down and sometimes hold it with my take your pick tool. Okay, so you know how before it looked very grainy and it was more like dark and subtle and now you can see it is super, super shiny. So I don't know if you guys heard me, but it does get really hot. Like my thumbnail is feeling really warm. Um, so a lot of times I don't hold it. I actually um, like place it down. And then if I'm doing it on a small piece of paper, then I use my take your pick tool to hold it in place so that I'm not burning my fingers. And instead it's um, being touched with the take your pick tool. Now I'm going to use the coordinating punches for both of these to punch them out, but I have to go get them. Hi, Laura, welcome. You always need to take a break every once in a while, but I'm sure the unpacking still has a lot to go. I feel like whenever you move, you unpack forever. I think it took us like a full month to unpack here. Um, and I was very adamant about getting everything unpacked. Okay. So this is quick and simple with these punches. No fussy cutting needed here.
Okay. Also, whenever um, I get back on um, where I'm showing your face, my face, you might notice a little bit of change behind me. Um, actually, directly behind me, that look might not change a little bit, um, but I am redoing a little bit of the sides of my stamp area where I'm adding in um, a desk on one end and um, and moved my punches over and things like that. So I don't know how much you guys might be able to see that, but how crazy is it? This just goes to show that it's like, nev like your craft room is a never ending cycle of making things work. Um, you know, we've only been here for a year and I'm already changing it up. So, um, so yeah, when people say like, you know, how do you have your craft room? I'm like, oh, it's always changing. So now we're bringing the desk from upstairs down here. We're also moving um, some things around because the nurse or the current playroom is going to become a nursery. So um, we're going to move some of Claire's playroom down here to the basement. So she's kind of getting like that end of, um, of the basement a little bit. So yeah, always changing. So um, I was jibber jabbering about something else for that. So I didn't actually get to show you guys how I did this. But I used a mini dimensional to secure the copper ribbon on the top of the ornament. And then I just added regular dimensionals on the back. So here's the little ornament. Here's the end of the copper ribbon. And a little mini dimensional to secure it down. And then I'm just adding more dimensionals so that it has that nice even look. And because you guys all know, I'm a dimensional over user. So these I just kind of offset, you know, one higher, one lower. And I'm going to go ahead and peel off the backs of these and place them down. And then I'm just going to wrap that ribbon around to the back side to secure it. So that's how I did the front. And now I'm just gonna add a strip of adhesive back here and secure that around to the back side. So that's how it looks from the front and that's how it looks from the back. And then now I'm just gonna add more adhesive all around. And like if you have too much and you don't want it super bulky back there, you can always trim that off. And now I'm gonna add this to one of my card fronts. And then we're gonna do that with this one too. Sticky. Does anybody have big plans for the weekend? We do not. Claire has a little bit of congestion, allergies, cold, something. Um, it's mostly just in her nose. So we're probably going to kind of lay low just so that she can get to feeling better. And, um, and we're not spreading it. Not that we really do much anyway, but I just want her feeling better. So this one I kind of did a little bit different. Oop, and I barely have enough ribbon on that little short one. The other one I did the big one lower. This one I did the big one higher. Let's make sure I get that wrapped around. Ooh, and it doesn't touch the adhesive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some tear and tape. So I'm going to get some of this little tear and tape, which I love because you can literally tear and then tape it down and use that to secure this little
And then I'm just gonna peel off the paper back. Jeez, this one does not wanna stick. And then just make sure that all of that adhesive is on the back side. So see, this one I did with the big one up high and the little one down low, and the other one I did vice versa. So. I'm gonna trim off the extra of that and then put this on our card front. But wait, there's more. I then took some of this fabulous navy uh, sheer ribbon and made a bow, little baby bows, for the tops of my ornaments. Huh. So I kind of do the bunny ear trick, which my fingers are so not working today. So it's kind of like a hot mess, but that's okay. We're just gonna sit here and play with it until we get that perfect size and perfect look. And then trim off the tails. And I'm gonna add this to the card with a blue dot. So I'm just gonna take my little mini glue dot and I'm actually gonna put one like off to one side of the ribbon and then another one off to the other side. I've noticed some of the glue dots that come in the um, kits are bigger than others. So this is one of like the smaller ones. So that's why I'm using two and it'll really secure that bow. So I just put that right at the top of the, um, the little ornament. What am I doing? How is it that I can't make a bow today? I have to say my club girls um, we're so excited to have these cute little bows. Much sarcasm in that statement. <laughs> I think I'm the only one who really likes to make little bows. Actually, I can't say I like to make little bows, but I do think they're super cute. But yeah, I wouldn't doubt if some of those ladies were cursing me whenever I said, and make two little bows. And so there's our two little bows. I might also put another little mini glue dot down there to really make the bow tails go down instead of across. Because he looks like a sad bow. Perk up, little bow. Perk up. There you go. So that is how I did that fabulous card with the, I totally understand, have fun with your stamp room and just know that it'll always change. Um, and you know, like you might put things in a certain spot and then you wanna change it again later cause it doesn't fit or it doesn't uh, work well with how you like to stamp or something like that. Um, like I said, my stamp room is ever changing just to fit the needs of my stamping or our lives or whatever it might be. But enjoy and, um, and have fun with your new craft room. So those are the two cards that we made. Just showcasing uh, heat embossing and getting that fabulous copper shine and texture. But then you can also use copper foil paper, copper ribbon, and Stampin' Up's fabulous designer series paper uh, that also has copper foil in it too, as well as other um, foil, foil colors like silvers and golds and stuff like that. 
Uh, don't forget that Stampin' Up! still has their designer series paper sale going on this month. So that does end at the end of next week, um, at the end of the month. And that is 15% off select designer series papers. So some of them are even under 10 bucks, which is a steal in my opinion. And I'm super excited about that. Um, so you can always check that out at laurastamppad.com under um, specials and promotions. Uh, but you can also go to uh, my website um, and shop, and that is um, laurastampad.com uh, shop now. So either one works. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time uh, learning about or just seeing other ways to use uh, heat embossing and having fabulous shine on your cards and possibly some ideas for Christmas cards for you this holiday season. So I hope you guys will have a wonderful weekend. Don't forget to cast your vote, Team Blue or Team Pink, uh, for what you think baby number two is going to be. Have a wonderful weekend. Love hugs and prayers to all of you guys. Stay safe and stay healthy. I love and appreciate all of you. And I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.